I want to welcome Brother Jackson Naibu for joining us today. So you can see the picture on the left that I've shown here is that uh, life is a, a, a cycle. It's a cycle in the sense that you come as a child, you grow, you become a girl, you become a woman, you basically become an old woman, and then your body decomposes, you die, but your spirit continues to live on. And if you have completed your lessons, you basically... Uh, uh, reincarnate uh, back to be able to uh, continue your experience if you have not yet sorry if you have completed your lessons you rise to the higher dimension to continue your journey but if you have not yet completed your lessons you basically have to reincarnate back to pick up from where you stopped from so life is a school it means the Most High sent us here on a mission to be able to complete certain things, to understand certain things about the Most High. And each and every time when we arrive, we're given certain lessons we need to be able to learn in that particular incarnation. When you complete them, you go, you come back to continue from where you stopped from. But if they feel like, okay, you have done, you have basically covered so many courses, there's no need for you to return you can continue those lessons in the higher dimension. So life on earth is not your love, but the matrix fabricates life in a way that gives you an impression as if you only live once and that's it, but no. So incarnation is basically the beginning of spiritual maturity. Without the understanding of reincarnation, honestly, it is very difficult to be able to rise uh, to the most high my friends of Africa. So reincarnation and love, reincarnation basically moves together with one particular principle, which is karma. Karma and reincarnation move together. Why? Because when you're existing, you are producing energies. It means you are making decisions with your free will. And those decisions, if they are basically good decisions, they give a return karma or what they call in the Hindu culture as Dharma. So Dharma are positive returns. You know, when you write an exam and you pass, you receive that certificate as a as a return of your of your sacrifice. That's called Dharma. But if you don't do the exam very well, you fail, you receive a return consequence of karma. So many times in the world, karma is taken as if it's something very negative, but Sometimes people do not speak about dharma. So dharma is the positive return. Karma is the negative return. But many people just put dharma together, fuse it together into karma. And people say, okay, whatever you do, you get a return of it, which is basically karma. So when you are living, whatever you're doing, you're getting a return of it. So reincarnation and karma are like twins. They are like love and justice. They work together. Wherever you find love, you'll find this brother justice. Wherever you find karma, you find reincarnation. It's very, very important. Uh, so like I said, the meetings will be will be cutting every 45 minutes, but you just come in back again and we'll continue from where we stopped from. So it's really uh, important that uh, when we are seeds of spirits, when we came into this dimension, we came from Mazulu, Sambodia. It means we came from the spiritual kingdom. For Christians, they say we came from paradise. So as we descended in every realm that we arrived in, the feminine entities, the symbies in that particular realm made us to wear bodies. Up to when we came to arrive here on the earth and our mothers gave us a physical body. So in the previous classes, we, we basically explained how the first incarnation happened. But today... We're going to fast forward to when a spirit is already here on the earth and is evolving and begins to do its experience. You know that when we began our experience for the first time after 150,000 years on the earth, we basically, uh, sin came into the world and the spirit, unfortunately, we spoke about this in the previous class on the origins of sin, that uh, we began to move into materialism and egocentrism. And we produce various types of egregores and phantoms and demons, which basically uh, delayed our class experience here on the earth. 
So first of all, there's a need for us to do a cleanup of our lives, to remove the load that we have produced on our back, which is basically the cases that we live in today. So reincarnation means what? Reincarnation means the spirit wears the last body, which is the physical body. It means the spirit takes possession of the body that is being manufactured by Basically, what I was saying to mention that reincarnation means a spirit basically wearing a physical body. It means you come and take possession of the body which your mother is basically building in her uh, womb after the union with your father physically. So when the spirit takes possession of the physical body that has been prepared by the mother, we call this incarnation. And when the spirit basically returns and gains another body to continue his or her experience, we call it reincarnation. So reincarnation is not a punishment. It is rather a gift and a grace that the Most High has given us. So we come back, we return to wear a new body so we can be able to either redo the lessons that we failed Maybe you were not a good partner in marriage. You return to be able to be a good partner in marriage. Maybe you were not a good friend. All your friends, you abused them, you took advantage of them. It means you have a debt in the karma of friendship. You come back to fix that karma of friendship. Maybe you are a person who is very angry. You have anger problems. You cannot become a servant of the Mosai if you are, have anger issues. So you return to fix those anger problems. So in your life, you may face problems where people try to get you as much angry, but it's an opportunity for the universe to give you to be able to conquer your anger problems. You can be a person who's, you have no control over your sexual feelings. You return to be able to conquer those sexual feelings, right? So that's basically how we grow. So if you fail an exam in a university, you don't move forward in the class. I know there are some universities today where the course follows you, but in the university of the universe, you cannot move forward if you have still some backlogs that you need to clear. So you may be having problems. Maybe alcohol, you drink so much, you have no control of what you consume, you eat very bad. All those are, so karmas are in different dimensions. Karmas is not just uh, in certain particular issues. Karmas can be many things, even Simple, simple things. You can return just for simple, simple things. So take life very serious. So reincarnation is not a punishment. Reincarnation instead is an opportunity the Most High gives that it's, it's the biggest grace. So the grace that people speak about in spirituality, I want to welcome um, Mungwe Muntu. I want to welcome Brother Victor Salo who has joined us again today. And also Brother Biola Edu who has joined us today. So just an announcement, we are basically... Uh, having a problem with our Zoom account. So every every 45 minutes, the meeting will be uh, going off. So just rejoin and we'll continue from where we stopped from. So reincarnation is not a punishment. It is actually grace to be able to come back and do better. So reincarnation means resurrection in the flesh. It is the grace that the Most High gives us to come and wear a new body to be able to continue our life experience. So reincarnation, when we arrive here below to be born again for another experience, there's something interesting that happens. The Most High puts a veil on our face. There is no possibility for you to remember your past experience. And there is no possibility to know your past life unless you really go through initiation in the, temple, in the temples of spirituality which we do not have so much anymore because of this Babylonian system. But back in the days, our ancestors will go through initiation. They will get visions of their past life and areas they need to work on. But when you come into this incarnation, you cannot remember your past experience. And we explained in the class 36, 37, and 38, why does the Most High do this? It, is, it may feel unfair, but it's actually very wise. Because if you enter into an exam room, you have been given an exam paper, and you, you do not perform well, and you have to rewrite the exam, if you know the answers of the previous exam, you cheat. 
but the exam is given with new questions so you can be able to show if really you have been able to learn but it's a bit tricky so when you come to reincarnate they do not allow you to be able to see what you did in the past it can be very catastrophic because if you wake up and realize that you are the one who is the one you in the black skin today you are the one that shipped african ancestors to the caribbean and colonized them but back then you were in the white skin it could be catastrophic for some many of many of you here if you realize that um, the problems that we are facing somewhere in america you were the author maybe you were hitler <laughs> So it can be very catastrophic. So there are certain situations which are hidden from us so that you yourself can make the effort to remove the veil in your face. It's much easier that way. So if you come into life and you know your past experience, how you were, what you did, but the victor, life becomes like a football game for you. So you become like the, the spectator on the side you begin to watch life like a football game. I did that. I know that. Hey, do this, do that. So instead of living, you begin to, you become a spectator. And by being a spectator, it can be very, very difficult sometimes because you will not be making an effort on your side. But life is the football game. It's happening. You have to be in the game. But if you know your past life, what you did, where and what you did and what you did not do and things like that, you begin to watch life like a football game as a spectator. So you will not make an effort anymore and it may even begin, give a big risk of you backsliding from the level that you were. So if in your past life, basically you're in level two, but you come into this life as a spectator, you'll find that you regress into level one. You will not make the effort to let go to level three. So the most high in his wisdom, he puts a veil in your, your face. You are sort of hidden from the things of your past. But from time to time in your life experience, you face certain difficulties that if you are wise, you know that this is maybe something that I struggled with in my past life. And then you conquer that particular obstacle and then you rise. So... It's very, very important if you come into life again and you know the answers to the previous, to the, the if you know the answers to the question paper, you will cheat. You have seen some people when they go to the classroom, they have a piece of paper in their hand, they want to cheat. So if you approach life knowing your past life in this way, not in a natural way, but as a cheater, you will not be able to rise. I'm sure many of you have had experience of déjà vu. You've an experience flashes on your face. You're like, I've seen this before. I've experienced this before. It happens a lot to me as well. Déjà vu. It means the universe flashes you with some events that you probably had gone through already. But because we are so in low frequencies, we don't tend to really dive to understand what is déjà vu. But people who are very high spiritually, when they go through a déjà vu, they really get a revelation and a vision. And it really guides them to make better decisions um, in the presence. I want to welcome Brother Benji as well, who has joined us today as well. And I can see Oppo A3S has joined us as well. Oppo, hope that you can be able to put your name so we can be able to know who you are. So reincarnation, basically, in order for us to arrive here on the earth, uh, well, if you return as a guru, uh, like I said, uh, I'll be able to explain that in details, Mungwe. So they are, when we return, they are, they are basically um, four types of human beings on the earth, like I've shown on this, on this picture here. They are people who have basically succeeded in their lessons. We call them basically the first category. They came, they have been able to follow the ways of the Most High, and they have succeeded to, in all their lessons. And they are now in the higher dimension that we call our ancestors. The second category in a classroom, in a classroom, there are students who are performing very well. They are passing the class. They are moving to the next class. We also have students who are not so interested in the class and the lessons. They are there to disturb the others from not learning. We call this basically the disturbers, the second category. And then 
we have a third category of those who are basically, they have not yet completed the course, but they are working with the disturbers because they want to gain some fame and money and enjoyment in the time of the course and not focusing exactly on the course. We call this, uh, you can see on the right, the, the, the third category, the first type. Third category, the first type are basically those who are in the classroom, but they are also not interested in the lessons in the class. They work with the disturbers, and then in, in exchange, they are famous, they are this amazing people in the classroom, they have money and things like that. And then finally, we have the second type under the third category. These are people who, they are really interested in the class, but somehow the disturbers have created some systems in the class that prevents them from focusing exactly on what the teacher is trying to teach in the course. Some of them are locked in religion. Some of them are locked in difficult things in life. They are trying to find a way to eat. So the focus to the class is a bit difficult. But the difference between the second type of the third category and the first type is the second type has not signed an official document with the disturbers to be able to work for them. We say th these are people who have maybe basically signed the, their deal with the devil. So this is basically the configuration of the earth. We have people who are passing their classes, they are moving forward. It's what you refer as the, some of them, since they have passed the class, they know the module. From time to time, they are sent back to help the first type and the second type. It's what you call gurus, Mungwe. Those are the ones who have already passed the in the higher dimensions. They return from time to time to help the third category, first type or second type. You see? But the second category, those ones don't are not interested in the course. They are there to disturb everybody else. And many times they work with the third category, first type to be able to make this life more of, uh, the class has become more of enjoying the class experience, drinking beer, having girlfriends and things like that, not necessarily focusing on the course. But the second type in the third category wants to focus on the course, but even though some of them are focusing on the course, but they're also having a very difficult time because the classroom is run by the disturbers, unfortunately, at the moment. So, because Mother Earth has become old and she's following basically a sequence of the solar system whereby she's going towards her decomposition because Mother Earth is also matter. She was born, she grew, now she basically arrived at maturation and she's going towards decomposition. So we, the inhabitants that live in this cosmic body of the Mother Earth, which is the classroom, uh, Brother Jackson, you know that you're in a classroom. The classroom will explode in the third semester. So you have some courses to clear before the class expo explodes. So you have to do your best to pass the courses very fast because when the class explodes, those who will be left in the class, the disturbers and the first type of the third category, they will explode with the class. But you have to make an effort to leave that classroom like the first category to be able to enter into a new classroom, you see. So the earth is going towards decomposition. So we have to be able to speed up our lessons as very as fast as possible to be able to leave the earth. So it's really important, my friends of Africa, that uh, we make this big change in our lives to really follow the Most High and do our best to leave the earth before it decomposes. So because we are basically in the time of Aquarius, and many, many people have been able to arrive here on the earth to be able to help humanity to speed up their lessons. And because we have come to a point in our life whereby uh, they are cleaning up the universe because the experience of learning in this classroom of the earth has come to an end. So this time of Aquarius, the lessons, we're not learning it at a very fast phase. And because many of the spirits that are basically in the astral world and other places, everybody needs to return to the earth to be able to face the last phase of the earth. 
That's why you are seeing there are so many people on the earth now. We are now almost to 8 billion people because everybody needs to return to face the last moments of the earth to decide if really you want to finish this course or not. So even the scientists and the politicians are going through a very difficult time to figure out where all these people are coming from. But they are basically in other dimensions who also see those spirits. So they are returning to be able to finish off their experience. But many of them are coming to face their judgment. Which everything that you produced on the earth, you have to be able to reap it. So everybody on the astral world has to come back. So in the next few years, the earth will even become more populated because everybody has to return. Every spirit that existed on the earth and planted needs to come and reap and do their reparations. So it's very, very important uh, to be able to understand why we have so many people on the earth is because we are basically in the end of days. So, and this is the time of Aquarius, it's the time of judgment. Everybody needs to come and face their judgment. So other spirits who are basically known as the messengers or the helpers or the gurus, like how the moon says, that come with a special mission to help those who are slacking behind in the course, they are coming not only in the black race, they are coming in different races. We find them in the white race for the white community. We find them in the red race for the Indian community. Gurus are found in the, in the Chinese race as well. So each people on the earth have received their spiritual helpers to be able to help them in this last uh, phase of the earth. So it's very, very important to be able to identify your helpers at this particular time so each uh, each people in the classroom has received has, re has received a particular teacher to come and help them to speed up uh, their lessons to leave the earth and gain spiritual maturity as soon as possible before the earth uh, decomposes. So in Africa, many prophets came, like Simon Toko, from Kimbangu, from Yesu came. Kimpa Vita, many people came to be able to help. Um, Name one and Stemi also came to help African people. If you go on the Chinese side, Buddha came. If you go on the Arabic side, Muhammad came. If you go on the Hindu side, they had all these people that came over there as well. And even in the white race, many people have come over there to help them also to speed up their lessons. So reincarnation, as we said, is the coming of the spirit into a physical body. The spirit wears a new body to be able to catch up on its lessons, to progress or to redo. To do some lessons, some spirits come, they begin their lesson, but don't seem to succeed in their lessons. So in this uh, reincarnation happens so that the spirit can be able to return and start off from where he or she stopped and catch up. And then when you clear your lessons, then you leave the earth and you rise to the higher dimension. So to complete the lesson, it doesn't mean you have to cover all the... So the cost is very large. Huh? The, to gain spiritual maturity is a very large cost. It's divided into sections. So in each incarnation, you have some lessons you need to clear. You go, you come back, you continue like that. It's very impossible to complete... The lessons in one incarnation is very difficult, especially these days when we live up to 40, 50 years old because we eat very bad and the environment is polluted. It's very difficult to finish your experience. Back in the days, our ancestors lived 200 years, 300 years, so they had more time to do the course. So back in the days, the classroom was open for 24 hours, for example. But these days, the classroom is open only for one hour, two hours. You have to leave the classroom. So it's, it's a bit difficult to be able to catch up with many lessons because the lifespan has become less for a human to finish up with course very fast. So uh, it's very important to be able to understand this, my friends of Africa. Uh, so when you basically come in one particular incarnation, suppose you have 10 lessons to clear, you will know the lessons inside of you, the things that you are struggling in with to become the image and resemblance of the Most High. So when you do some, you have 10, for example, you have 10 lessons, you cover five, you die, your physical body dies, you go out, 
you come back, you continue from lesson number six to be able to finish up to 10. Okay, so the Simbis are there and they have details about how you are doing your course, your whole process. And if they notice that you have the wheel and you're following the most and you're doing your lessons well, instead of returning on the earth, they can permit you to go to the kingdoms of light. It means other developed planets to continue your lessons from there and save as an ancestor or a spiritual guru to somebody who was still here on the earth. Remember in class number 62, we spoke about what is the spirit. We said that a spirit has basically the five senses of life. The sense of sight, hear, smell, taste, touch, it's not only in your physical body. It, these are the senses of the spirit. But the body simply, since it's a suit, it also takes those senses as well as the suit. right? So when you leave the physical dimension, you simply remove the physical body and you arise in your astral other body, just like how a snake removes its skin, that's how you remove this physical body, right? And the new body which you shall appear in is adapted to basically the life which is basically there. And in each planet, there are also lessons that you need to be able to do over there and complete. And if you complete them in obedience, you move according to, the, and if you're doing everything according to the will of the Most High, you keep climbing up and up, up to where you shall arrive in the last kingdom of light, which is Laodicea, and you remove the last shell, and then you enter into paradise, or what we call the spiritual kingdom, Mazulu Sambwadi. But other spirits, when they arrive here by incarnation, instead of doing their lessons well, they keep getting, they keep increasing the commas, adding bad commas and bad commas. For example, you left on level two of your lessons, but when you reincarnate, you start from zero. You keep regressing minus one, minus two, adding more commas. And this is how you are seeing basically more than a half of the inhabitants of the earth they keep repeating and repeating their lessons. They are not moving forward, but they are basically in danger because Mother Earth has already become old and she's going towards her death. So this was just a simple introduction into reincarnation. But now let's dive deeper into reincarnation. The incarnation or the reincarnation of human beings, it is the law of the most side that is called the law of justice and love and there are three laws that intervene in the law in the process of incarnation the first law is the law of attraction of affinity it means things that resemble each other come together like attract like another law that intervenes is the law of reciprocal of effects and inside of this law there are two laws the law of justice or gravity and the law of shock return or karma. So, what are basically the steps in reincarnation? You're reincarnating. What is the process? What happens when you're reincarnating? So, the first step of reincarnation is procreation. It means there has to be an act, a physical act of sex that needs to happen here on the earth and the body has to begin to be built by the mother before the spirit can come. But for this act of sex to happen, you cannot have sex anyhow. Please watch class number 36, 37, and 38. We explained the preparation for having a child. You cannot have sex. Did I miss the dead effect on the spirit? Can you elaborate your question, Queen Asia? So to be able to engage in the act of sex, you have to be able to... I'm sorry. Oh. Yes. Oh, I was just asking, um, in your previous slide, um, I thought you mentioned that it was three um, effects on the spirit. And I and I saw two. I said, did I miss the third one? Oh, no. Actually, the, the, the actually three would say, but the, the third one sort of enters into the second law of respect of effects. Okay. Which, which is gravity. Okay, got it. Yeah, but you can say there's a law of attraction of affinity, there's a law of uh, reciprocal of effects, and the law of justice. But which justice just tends to put 
to enter into the law of reciprocal of effects. Okay. Thank you. So when you're about to invite a spirit into your union, the first thing you have to set up an appropriate cadre. You cannot have a child in the bar, a child out of wedlock. You have to marry a woman. If you're a man, legally, according to the culture of the woman, have the ceremony, be married before the most high, before engaging the act of sex to bring a spirit. Because once you do any act of sex, not respecting the principles and laws that the most high has set up, you are going to set up an infiltration. Unfortunately, watch the seas of Elizabeth in the Zoroban 2 patron account. You'll be able to see that these things are real. If you don't respect the norms, if you want to walk with the Most High, there are laws of movement with the Most High. If you don't respect those laws, you open a window for the devil. So you have to, you have to form an appropriate cadre. It means you have to marry your wife legally, you have to be able to marry your husband legally. And then you have to enter into a process of prayer to be able to make sure that by the time you engage in the act, the speed that comes in is of your resemblance and you don't invite an intruder. And then before even engaging in an act of sex, you have to treat yourself. Because remember, as a man, you are releasing 23 chromosomes. And the woman also is releasing 23 chromosomes, which fuses into 46 chromosomes. So it means you have to be healthy. If you are not healthy... You know you are not healthy. You cannot engage in the act of sex. You have to first go and get treatment to make sure that you produce the right kind of sperms. My friend, spirituality is knowledge. This is pure spirituality. We are not in dogmas and precepts. As Africans, we are not like other people. We cannot make babies as a race, as a rat race. We are very careful on how we invite spirits into this dimension. So, you prepare an appropriate cadre. You seek the most high before the act. You treat yourself to be able to engage, to produce the right kind of chromosomes. Because you know some children are born with deformities. It could be not a karma. It could be your problem as a parent. Your chromosomes were not healthy. And now your child has to face the consequence which you could have, be, you could have prevented if you took on proper medical health care. So... After that, we move into when you are basically engaged in the act, these three laws come into play to decide what kind of spirit will come into your union to take on the body. The law of attraction of affinity, you only attract a spirit that resembles you spiritually, not physically, spiritually. Another law comes into place, the law of reciprocal of if. It means you as a couple, the things that you produced has to return to you. If it was something good, you may receive a good spirit. If it was something bad, unfortunately, you shall receive something even more wicked by the law of shock return, which falls under one of the laws of reciprocal of effects. And then... Here on the earth, a man and a woman engage in the act of procreation. When this act of sex occurs, a mother notices, notices that she has missed her period. It means the pregnancy has been attached. She's now pregnant. When she's pregnant, now, how does the spirit come to incarnate? How does the incarnation happen? So there's a need for you as a mother when you're pregnant at the beginning because you build the entire engine for the incarnation. When a woman is pregnant, if she lives in a spiritual way, or if she lives in a material darkness way, it plays a great law and a great role in the incarnation of the spirit that she'll pull into the union. Let's take an example of a woman who basically lives spiritually. It means a woman who follows the ways of Tatanzambe, what exactly happens? Uh, uh, welcome, I think Queen Anne is here today as well. Love and blessings to you. So let's take a, a case of a woman who basically lives spiritually, right? It's very, very important. You have to know that we are energetic beings. It means we emit certain radiations depending on how we live spiritually. 
we have we have some sort of energy that we emit that we radiate into the universe so we radiate around you there are energies that you radiate you don't seem to see it with your physical eye but it exists you send out some sort of senses so when a woman is pregnant she is radiating energies that basically is in correspondence with her vibrational frequency now those rays that she emits basically will attract a spirit in the astral world, a spirit of the same frequency and radiation that she is emitting. And that spirit, by the law of attraction of affinity, in the law of like attracts like, that spirit will be attracted to the woman who is emitting those rays. So if she's emitting radiation of light, it means of love, purity, and justice, she will attract a spirit of the same frequency. So those two radiations are like ropes. When a woman is radiating, the spirit is also radiating in the astral world. The radiation happens in such a way that it begins. Yeah, so you begin to glow when you're pregnant. You're giving an attention to people out there. I'm sure many of you who have seen this, if, if, if you study, if you study nature, there are some there are some butterflies or animals when they're ready for gestation period, they begin to release some kind of an odor out there to attract a male one to come. Some birds sing particular songs. So even as a spirit, you begin to radiate, and those radiation rise, and even the spirit in the asteroid begins to radiate, and then your radiation attaches together like ropes. And then as you're radiating, the spirit in the astral world is also radiating. And you create some sort of a liaison connection by attraction of affinity. So the spirit becomes closer to the mother and waiting for the position of the body that the woman is building. But the spirit has not yet taken position of the body. Now, let's take an example of a woman who lives in darkness. She's radiating materialism, egocentrism, anger, hate, jealousy. She's not a spiritual woman. She's radiating nothing but trouble. It is very hard for such a woman to attract a spirit of light. It means uh, a reason ancestor. Very difficult. By the law of attraction of affinity, you will only attract what you resemble. So, you will begin to pull a spirit of darkness that will come to begin to surround you looking for an opportunity to incarnate. Because that spirit will be in affinity with you and will be waiting for an opportunity to take possession of the body. That's how you see back in the days when a woman, especially in the time of our ancestors, they had so much knowledge about this that they made sure that when a woman is pregnant, she needs to be very careful. First of all, she needs to observe the area that she is in and also the places, the places that she visits. They were very, very intelligent, our ancestors. When a woman was pregnant, she had to be very careful. If she was staying with people who like to gossip, they made sure that she, at that moment of pregnancy, she moves away from that environment of gossips and bad friends. She basically takes some sort of a sabbatical, what we call in Kikongo. She enters into a kikumbi away from that those energies because she does not want someone else to attract for her a spirit that she herself has not attracted. Because in the astral world, When a spirit is coming to incarnate, not only the mother can pull that spirit, even the husband can pull the spirit in the family. So the husband also plays a big role. It can also be the people that she lives with in the house at that particular time of the pregnancy, they can also attract a spirit to be born into her womb. It can also be the area where she goes to hang out. You're pregnant, you're going to the bar, you are drinking beer, you are hanging out in a place which is so, not so, a place of low frequencies. So 
it's very difficult. You are pregnant, you are hanging around with drug dealers and mad people and stable people when you're pregnant. You're not being careful. You end up attracting a spirit that is in the same frequency with the environment that you are in. So according to the law of gravity, a spirit of light and a spirit of darkness, when they are competing to come to incarnate, please watch the series on Elizabeth on Patreon. When they are competing to come to incarnate into a pregnancy, the spirit of light tends to give in easily to the spirit of darkness. The spirit of light looks for the appropriate radiation to incarnate. But if you are Madam 5050, in the morning, you are a different frequency. In the evening, you are a different frequency. You will get an intruder. But because the spirit of darkness is very materialistic, it rushes first, faster as compared to the spirit of light. The meeting will be ending in a few minutes. Please, when it does, just come in automatically. We'll continue from there. We've been facing some problem with our Zoom meeting, with our Zoom account. But from next week, we shall be able to solve this problem. So when a woman is pregnant, Oh, Mbengo will be joining us. Wow, I hope he catches up with us. And so when a woman is basically pregnant and she's hanging out in areas that is not and not being careful, she can end up pulling a spirit of darkness to be born into her family. That's why you see in some families, a father vibrates in light, the mother also vibrates in light, but they've given birth to a child who is complicated, troublesome. They are surprised and asking, my husband, where did this child come from? And we don't understand this. We've given birth to a child. We don't understand where this child has taken all these behaviors from. But try to go back as a woman if you're sincere. In the moments when you're pregnant, from the first up to the fourth month, what sort of environment were you in? We don't understand these things. And then when these things happen, you begin to blame the most. Like, Why is my child like this? What's wrong with this child? He doesn't listen. But you forget that when you were as a mother, you were pregnant, you did not control your surroundings and not careful with the people that you hanged around with or the places that you went to. That is why when a woman is pregnant, my kings, many of you who are married, set up a good environment for your queen. Be very, very careful. She needs to be very careful where she hangs out. So I know life is very difficult, my kings, but try to work hard so that when your woman is pregnant, she doesn't need to go and do heavy labor jobs, carrying loads on her weight. She goes to the market where there are different types of people and energies while she's pregnant. That is not good. A woman, when she's pregnant, needs to be in an isolated place. She has everything that she needs. You are giving her so much love. So you can attract a good spirit. Another case can be a mother who is vibrating in darkness. According to the law of affinity, she is full of evil things around her. You know, so if she likes to hang out maybe in bad places, she can never attract a spirit of light to be born um, on the inside uh, of her. But a mother who is vibrating in light can attract a spirit of light, and by not being careful. Uh, she can also attract a spirit of darkness if she hangs out basically in evil spaces. That is why in our African ancestry, when a woman is pregnant, she is kept in isolation up to when that pregnancy will be closer to the end. Some will not even allow, uh, will not even tell people that uh, my wife is pregnant until when the spirit has fully um, incarnated into the pregnancy, then they break the news to the neighbors and even friends and announce it to the public because our ancestors knew this knowledge. They knew that when a woman is pregnant, so many evil spirits always hang around her looking for an opportunity to be able to infiltrate. Please watch our, our, our story, Elizabeth, to be able to understand these things uh, in depth. These spirits are called basically intruder spirits. They can end up entering the pregnancy without being called. So as parents basically who are vibrating in light, you have to make sure that uh, you are basically hanging out in, in the good places to be able to attract a good spirit to come to be born into your family. Now let's speak to the spirit uh, him ourselves. We explained that in the previous classes on reincarnation, 
how the karmic body is charged so please watch please watch class number 36 37 and 38 on reincarnation so say the spirit basically dies here physically and goes up to the astral world suppose the spirit did not lead a good life on earth the spirit is basically received in the astral world he goes to the astral prisons to face his or egregos and then the ferryman of souls come to pick him or her to go after they've recognized their egregos to go to the chambers of repentance to be able to be taught and the angels and the simbis who are there basically begin to teach this spirit on the bad things or that he or she did in the life that they lived and begin to give him um, lessons in the areas that he struggled here on the earth and he's thought okay you need to be able to return again on earth to be able to reincarnate to fix up your lessons you know, we are showing all this in the series of Elizabeth in detail for you to be able to understand uh, exactly how things happen uh, over there and above. It's really, really important for you to be able to subscribe to our Patreon to be able to listen to this story of Elizabeth. So, my friends of Africa, last time um, we spoke to say that there are basically um, three types of Simbi that basically each of us uh, is responsible for our lives. They are basically attached to our lives here on the earth. They are some sort of our basically our guardian angels. Okay, they are some sort of our guardian angels, and they are there to basically look after our life to make sure that we're basically moving in the right way in our thoughts, our ways, and also in our actions, even in our intuitions. And so, for the process of reincarnation, there are also other symbols that basically deal with spirits when they are about to reincarnate back on earth. So, once a woman is pregnant here on the earth, automatically those symbols receive a signal to begin working. They begin to plan. We show this basically in the series of Elizabeth on Patreon. They begin to see, okay, suppose that speed basically was, was a soldier on earth. He was maybe a policeman and he used to be able to, he used to use this op occupation, this opportunity the most High gave him to be a soldier. To, in, instead of protecting his country, yes, he goes into war, begins to rape women, chop people's eyes, committing crimes of war, cutting women who are pregnant open when they are still pregnant. These things happen in the east side of Congo. You now, when this kind of speed arrives in the astral world and there's a need for him to re reincarnate back, they tell this speed, well, we received your file and know all the things that you did. We have a report of how you lived your life. Now you're going to return back to gain, to again, to start your lessons. The Simbis will create for this particular spirit a new, uh, a new astral body. They will create for this spirit a new, a new astral body. And basically to be able to bring him back to uh, incarnate back on the earth but before the spirit reincarnates the spirit is in need of a body that is called the astral body without the astral body impossible a spirit cannot uh, reincarnate back on earth. they will make for him this speed basically a new astral body and when they are making the astral body when they are making that astral body at the same time the receptor the mother on earth her fetus basically begins to grow and begins to develop in the womb. The, feet, the, the fetus that the mother basically builds grows at the same pace as the Simbis are making the astral body. So when the Simbis will finish making the astral body, why the astral body? Because the astral body radiates, it emits, it's like a receptive emitter and it captures radiations. They will take all your karmas of your last incarnation and insert it into this new astral body they will take your virtues and all your qualities and insert it also into this astral body and then they will make you the spirit who's returning back to wear this astral body and so as we said earlier the mother on the earth also sends her radiation she also emits certain energies and so when the new astral body is emitting a certain frequency that resembles the mother who is here on the earth, the ropes begins to touch each other like a magnet. It cannot be seen with the physical eye. And so when the ropes are touching each other and the astral body, the Simbis have finished building it, the spirit now descends and takes possession of the fetus. When the pregnancy of a mother arrives at the middle of the cycle, that is when the spirit comes to take possession of the body that the mother has been able to build on the earth. And then immediately the full circulation of the blood also begins and the heart begins to beat intensively. When a mother feels the baby move because it's basically in two ways. 
some mothers when the spirit incarnates they feel joyful but some other mothers when the spirit incarnates they may feel stress they may feel so much stress it depends on how the spirit basically enters other spirits when they enter a mother becomes very stressed other spirits when the mother be when they enter the mother becomes joyful she says wow i heard my baby move the spirit has incarnated and taken possession of the body now you see that the fetus that the mother was building finally takes up the form of the person um, because the spirit has been able to wear it at the same time the heart begins to beat intensively and the full circulation of the blood also begins because for the spirit to take possession of the fetus that the mother is building the fetus is in need of blood without the blood the spirit cannot take possession of the body that's why you see when a spirit enters the blood circulation when the spirit enters the blood immediately begins to circulate because of the spirit that forms the blood thus during some deaths like for example from an accident when there's so much bloodshed the spirit can no longer be in possession of the body because the essence the fuel of the spirit to be able to occupy the body is the blood thus the binder between the spirit and the body is the blood as we, is the blood as we taught in the previous class see where many people who practice blood sacrifice to be able to work with the gregos and to do certain agendas so the loss of blood sometimes they tend to use these energies to be able to do incantations and all sort of egregores to be able to influence people in one way or another but when you lose so much blood the spirit has no choice than to leave that is what we call physical death do some research on what we're basically teaching so when a spirit has taken possession of the body and the body is growing <coughs> excuse me the spirit on the inside can sense light and sound that's why our ancestors in many of uh, the marriages when a woman is pregnant you notice our mothers or grandmothers will sing for the child some songs and you notice that when you sing for the child sometime the child will have one particular song that he or she likes very much and when that song plays the child begins to move inside the body so be very careful my fathers who are going to be future fathers to make sure that your wife is in a very beautiful environment when she's pregnant do not abuse her do not beat her because the child will be able to hear these things your wife is pregnant you're throwing her off the stairs shouting at her having your mother who oh, she's a mother-in-law giving her a difficult time when she's pregnant it is very very difficult so this idea of um, uh, making some sounds for the baby when she's pregnant has been developed by europeans you know around their science they even have techniques on how to place certain frequencies to the baby when the when the woman is pregnant you know so you can be able to experiment this and even try to see uh, for yourself uh, my friends of africa so the first step that we mentioned basically was procreation and we spoke now about incarnation and now the third step is birth it means the pregnancy is now at its peak by nine months and the child is born others the pregnancy has not yet arrived but others the pregnancy has not yet arrived as a speak and the mother has a miscarriage when a woman has a miscarriage it means the spirit that took possession of that pregnancy either by an exterior disturbance has affected the spirit and is not able to ex to continue his experience the spirit withdraws from that body and abandons the body and that flesh comes out in what we call a miscarriage it means the spirit returns to where it came from other cases can be as we we're speaking of karma let's take the case of a woman who likes to abort you notice this this woman basically in her past life she likes to abort so many children every time she falls pregnant she doesn't want to give birth she keeps aborting she is a champion of 15 to 16 abortion at the age of 16. when she dies and basically goes to the astral world unfortunately she goes through the chambers of repentance and goes to the to recognize the egregores and then she, in the chamber of repentance she's taught some of the mistakes that she's made 
and she said or she told that okay look despite the lessons that you received there's no you can be able to rise to the higher dimensions you have to be able to return to the earth to fix the problems that you basically created you need to return to the earth to restart your lesson now listen very careful now you see that this woman when she's on her way back to reincarnate she enters and takes possession of a fetus and you'll see that fetus grows up to about six months and all of a sudden boom the development of the fetus creates a problem and a miscarriage happens the spirit that took possession of that body it returns again where it came the mother and the father on the earth are left behind oh, what happened we had a baby everything was fine but now a miscarriage wanted to have a child but the child has died in the pregnancy in african ancestry they will make this woman go through this woman who has had a miscarriage to go through some rituals so that cannot happen again but the question is why did that spirit return because that spirit instead of it being born and see the world but only stops at the pregnancy and returns it is some sort of that spirit that went to the astral world when it's coming back it stops halfway through the pregnancy and returns it's some sort of way he or she she is paying her karma of a past life because in a past life when she was pregnant a spirit wants to come to be born she's chasing that spirit away via abortions the act of abortion means you are chasing the spirit away you don't have love when you're removing pregnancies it is a lack of love it is egocentric another person wants to come and take possession of the body that you are building to continue his or her spiritual lesson you are chasing the person you see once you yourself will go and you want to come and take possession of a particular phys physical body here you also will be chased away you see you take possession of a body that the mother is preparing for you you arrive by five or six months you are pulled back and that mother has a miscarriage you keep circulating like that up to when you you'll be able to come you, up to when you shall return to the astral world it keeps happening like that you're going to be able to gain a consciousness of uh, what you did was absolutely wrong you arrive there you're like ah, every time i go there i get put back what is this up to when the simis will ask you have you understood do you know how it feels you see yourself when you you went to reincarnate you were being chased so it's a lesson for you because this is what you were doing to others your mistake every time you get pregnant you keep aborting chasing those spirits not to take possession of the body that you are building. So, these are your American laws of um, Roe versus Wade. You have to be able to raise the, the debate much higher with the understanding of spirituality. It's not about who keeps the baby or who, remo who removes the baby. The debate is much bigger, my friends of Africa. Now, for a woman who has given birth on a normal case after nine months, like we said in the example of the soldier or the policeman who has been having a habit of raping women at war, chopping people's eyes, killing people, cutting people's legs, when he arrives in the astral world and needs to reincarnate back, the symbols will make for him an astral body. They make it with defects because it is his karma. Now, the body that the mother is building here on the earth, it takes the form of the astral body. The astral body does not take the form of the body that the mother is forming, but instead it is the body that the mother is forming that takes the form of the astral body. So how the astral body is, that is how the spirit will be born here on the earth physically. If the astral body was made, for example, with one eye closed, the body which the mother will be forming will take the same form. That is why some people give birth to a child who has malfunctions, deformations. The astral body that was made by the Simbis was made with deformations and the physical body just copied the astral body to be able to carry that karma. And the physical body will be born, it develops a particular defects and the child is born that way. If you take for example the example of Fumuyesu, when he met the blind person, his disciples asked him, Master, is it this man who's seen or the parents of this man who's seen for him to be born blind? Whom Yesu told them, even though the scriptures was manipulated, he said, No, it is this man who sinned and he has come to repair. So from Yesu healed him, accelerated, accelerated the healing process, but to be able to help this man, but he basically was the consequences of the decision that he used to make back in the days in his past life, and he had a shock return 
in the form of karma so if that child is born to a parents who are awakened spiritually or his surrounding is awakens is awakened they will guide this child who basically has deformation or is handicapped they cannot throw him away so first thing as parents you need to be able to give this child who has deformation so much love his surroundings give them so much love show them love despite them being grown in the handicap with the love that you give them he or she will begin to clean his karma slowly very unfortunate in africa how we make fun of handicapped people but if you look at europeans eh, they know god more than you they take care of the handicap they even have sports for handicaps and things like that but in africa we really take fun of the blind the lame it's very unfortunate you are carrying those cameras yourself as well when you make fun of someone who's blind hey eh? you will be surprised you come back blind yourself don't blame the universe so really show these handicapped people so much love so they can be able to clean their cameras many of these people who are born in deformation like this like no legs are previous soldiers they used to do this kind of killings to people and cutting people's hands people who have no eyes people are blind or deaf things like that or dumb please show them love my friends of africa show them love it's really really important uh, for them to be able to be shown love to be able to clean off their uh, karmas another karma is a very big manipulation but to explain it is better for us to be able to dive into the roots you know we are human spirit means we are basically the image of the most high in the physical dimension but we come here in two uh, parts others are feminine others are masculine others are male others are female because it is basically even if you look at an atom there's a positive and a negative in an atom there's a proton and a neutron surrounded by electrons so the most high our creator is hermaphrodite it means the most high has the masculine and the feminine side on the inside of the most high the yin and the yang the tatanzambi and the mamandombe so the most high is hermaphrodite mamandombe is there as basically as a form that, as an energy that gives form to everything that tatanzambi produces so the masculine energy is basically the constructor of the universe but the feminine energy is there to be able to guide the masculine energy to make sure that we do not lose um, connection with the most so the women are there to remind us of our celestial citizenship daily while the men are there to build and transform this universe into the image of the most so when the radiation came from the most high as seeds of space that we are we divided into two so it means as a man that i am today I also have the feminine energy on the inside but it is asleep my masculine energy is active and also as a woman that you are listening to us today you also have the masculine energy on the inside but the masculine energy which you have on the inside is asleep it is your feminine energy which is active thus come the importance of marriage it is a union of these two activities the union of the feminine and the masculine activity the union of the left hand and the right hand of the most high come together you learn from your wife and she learns from you even the act of sex is an exchange of energies i'm sure you've heard about this that when once you get married you become one you know you even begin to resemble each other so you exchange one teaches you what they have learned and you teach them what you have learned that is how you retain being a hermaphrodite to return back to the most high but unfortunately because of sin that came into the world so many manipulations have come into the world today where people are now being born in the wrong body because of karma and manipulations so i want to address it i want to address a topic which i want to say first of all i'm sorry to this community uh, i love them so much and please let's show them so much love i don't mean to share this in sort of uh, to make them feel bad or anything but as a spiritual teacher i have nothing but to tell the the truth so today we have a very big problem because normally uh from the start 
those that come as women are born into the right body as a feminine body and those that come as men are also born into the right body which is the the male body so a masculine energy incarnates into a physical body of a man and the feminine energy also incarnates into the physical body of a woman so you can see from the illustration there the spirit of a woman is on the inside even the body on the outside is the body of a woman the spirit of a man is on the inside even the body outside is the body of a man but today we have what we call the alphabet community they have taken 20 percent of the alphabet to themselves we have what we call the gaze. The gaze is what? The gaze is basically he has a body of a man on the outside, but inside is a woman. So he has incarnated into the wrong body. All these are a result of manipulations and karmas. The lesbians basically he's a she's a woman on the outside, has the body of a woman, but inside has is basically is a man. And then if this woman who's a lesbian wants to feel like the man that she is on the inside she can go into it to become a transgender female where she begins to dress uh she begins to dress like how she feels on the inside as a man she even shaves her head wears a suit and feels like a man but inside um, even though she has a physical body of a woman but on the inside she feels like a man so she wants to show to the world who she is on the outside by changing her physical outfit and then those who are basically gays can also do as transgender it means she feels like a woman on the inside so he begins to wear high heels putting painting their fingernails wearing dresses because he wants to feel like how he is on the inside he transgender but now there are even more complications my friend we have bisexuals bisexuals are basically a person who is either a man or a woman in the stuck in the wrong body and can basically sleep with any can sleep with a lesbian can also sleep with basically um, uh, can sleep with uh, a man and also sleep with a woman and then we also have the cure basically the cure very very complicated then basically they can basically do anybody anyhow that they feel like unfortunately all these are manipulations deformations uh, as a result of karma and bad choices that has been made in life it's very catastrophic so uh, these deformations as a result leads to people's skin being changes there are changes in skin it means you are now born in the wrong body unfortunately it's very very unfortunate and these things are happening it is a result of uh, karma my friends of Africa we call this basically deformed souls so as a woman spirit stuck in a man's body it's impossible for you to give birth because the grace and the gift to give birth comes from the most high once you are a woman you are stuck in a man's body that fuel to give birth to a child is taken away from you it is impossible for such um, a, a, a woman who is stuck in a man's body even if you change your body to look like a woman it's impossible for you to give birth and vice versa also as a man these are called deformed souls and deformed souls they tend to attract each other so a natural woman cannot be attracted to a man who is a woman on the inside impossible because in the law of the universe like attracts right like things that don't are not resembling each other repel so if you're a natural woman it means you are a woman on the inside and you also have a physical body of a woman if you are attracted to if you are together with a man who is a woman on the inside unfortunately it cannot work out there will always be problems among you you always feel like something is pulling you apart so there are even situations like this i was trying to address that even couples who are going to very difficult but they don't understand they are always facing problems something is always trying to pull them apart if you go before people who are spiritual uh, doctors in africa they will tell you that just by looking at uh, both of you they'll tell you that one of you is a deformed soul so you always feel that repulsion among you always want to be to separate you know it's very very something always tries to pull you apart because the law of attraction of affinity is not there there's so much rep 
power jeune. That's why deformed souls only attract each other. Men end up with men, women end up with women. And today we have what we call fake marriages. Uh, two people who are married, they don't seem to understand something just happens to separate them, like I was saying. But people who are initiated, when they look at both of you, they will sense something is up. Oh, mama, we are seeing on the inside of you, but you you have a physical body of a woman and everything, but inside you are a man. Hmm? So the man may be normal, but goes to marry a woman who has basically a deformed soul. That marriage would not go far. You end up divorcing. You have seen all these Hollywood, these Hollywood celebrities. They are always divorcing. Why? Because many of them are deformed souls. So you can be married with somebody as a couple. You look as if you're opposite sex on the outside, but on the inside you are deformed souls, or one of you is a deformed souls. And now, because say the woman does not know that she's a man on the inside, but she's a deformed soul. It will be very difficult for her to give birth. You go and look for ways to give birth and everything. But if you approach spiritual people, they'll tell you, Mama, you're a, woman, you're a man on the inside. So that energy and that fuel to give birth is not there anymore. I mean, so you see, it's very unfortunate. Uh, these kind of cases, they happen. So you waste time, doctors to doctors, drinking pills and pills. But it will not fix anything because you are a deformed soul. So... There are some things we cannot speak about in a public space like this, but we shall be able to keep it for those that will go to the relevant to initiation. But please, uh, if you are facing so many problems in your marriage, in your marriage, try to ask existential questions sometimes to be able to understand things in a deeper way. So it's really, really important to be able that in the future of Zolobantu, we shall have initiated doctors that will be able to help, in, especially in marriages. To be, you, you go to a doctor who understands spirituality and also understands uh, biology at the same time to be able to help you. But I know that in Africa we are giving these people so much hate, so much hate. We hate homosexuals, we hate lesbians. Instead, teach them why they think that they are doing is wrong, but do not show them so much hate, like how they are receiving so much hate today in the world. Give them so much love to be able to be able to repair their karma. It's very, very, very important, my friends of Africa. So if you have a sister who is lesbian, it's not for you to hate her. You have to show her love at the same time educate her why being with a woman having sex with candles is not the solution or if you have a cousin who is gay to be with a man and having sex from behind like monkeys is not the solution the best thing is to be able to give them love in such a way you teach them the wrong things about it that an anus is not an entrance it's an exit right you have to be able to show them in biology and be able to prove to them in nature that the things that you're doing is unnatural but it's not in the hate that you're going to be able to help them but show them so much love so you can be able to help them um another another karma can be let's say for example you are in, you're in a relationship with the, with, a, with a person but both of you engage in so many evil acts as a couple. You are a married man and a married woman, but the two of you, you basically run a drug organization. Or maybe you do maybe some sort of, uh, you run maybe uh, an organization of, uh, uh, of uh, let's say you basically kidnap children. It means you engage in evil things, but you do it as a couple. Now, in this kind of uh, karma is, you live together, but what, it comes a time when one of you maybe dies and you separate. Say, for example, the man dies and leaves the wife behind on the earth. Now, you, the man, when you arrive in the astral world, in many cases, the Simbis will keep you in the waiting room to wait for the other partner who you left on the earth to also die to join you, and then you will face the judgment together. So you arrive in the astral world, you wait in the waiting room, they keep you there waiting for the others to die. So, but, um, but you know, so this is your question about uh, people waiting to reincarnate. Many of them are waiting for the others who are still here on the earth who have not died yet. They are waiting for them to die so they can go and face judgment together. So this is what we call uh, union, ju un union judgment. 
It means you did crimes together. You need to be judged together. They cannot judge you all separately. I know Christianity speaks about you face your judgment alone, but if you did something bad together, you ran a drug organization together as a couple, you definitely, one of you has to wait for the other to die, to come and join you in the astral world, and you can be able to face um, you know, your karmas together to be able to solve your karma together. Now, our final example before we come to the end of our class today is one particular karma which is very common I've noticed is you know, Patience Ozoku is one of my favorite uh, uh, my favorite Nollywood actors. She always plays the dangerous mother, or crazy mother, and mother-in-law and things like that. But I really wanted to use this picture to be able to better explain what I'm trying to explain today. So suppose you're a mother and you have a daughter. The daughter grows up, but the mother is full of ego. You do not want your daughter to get married. All sorts of men line up. They come to, to your house to seek your daughter's hand in marriage. But you refuse. You keep blocking your daughter. You want your daughter to be in the home like a jewelry and a flower that you look at every day. Your daughter has finished school, is working, has a good job. But you say, no, we will be together forever. That sort of behavior is selfish ego. It's not love. She will tell people, I love my daughter. That is not love, but selfishness. It is contrary to the will of the Most High. So when you're being selfish on that girl and not letting her go, the day the Most High will call your spirit, it means the day you will die. The mother dies and leaves the daughter here on earth. But where she goes, she's still so much attached to her daughter on because of that love, that selfish love. She cannot climb up because she has taken her selfish love with her. Now, because that ego, selfish love is a material love, she will always be attracted to her daughter who she left on the earth. Now, since she has left with so much selfish love and that selfish love has given birth to roots. It creates some sort of a strings which is attached to her and her daughter. And when her daughter here on earth finally meets a man and she gets married, but because her mother who died and went away with so much selfish love for her, and the mother has not let go of her daughter, and the daughter also thinks that the mother basically uh, had so much love for her even though her selfish, so in the past life, that woman was the mother to the daughter, but in the next life, she comes to be born as a daughter to her own daughter of the previous life. So her own daughter gives birth to her again. Now, because her daughter also developed a selfish love for her mother, her mother gave her, she now has a baby girl and begins to treat her daughter the way her mother was treating her. She can't go out. She can't hang out with the man. She cannot leave the house. But it is instead you yourself, the mother, you came back and you're born in your own daughter. And the child begins to make you suffer the same way you made her suffer. Spirituality is interesting. You begin to ask yourself, oh, Mama, why can't you let me go? I have to go out. No, you're staying here. You're not going out. Now you are born again to your own daughter and your daughter is now making you suffer like you did to her. Up to when you come to understand that cycle and one of you breaks it, then the string can be broken off. And when one dies, they can rise and then you can come back to share some real love. So when you come to a particular realization, yes, this person is your daughter, but you have to allow your daughter to be free. You are just a parent. You gave her the body, but the spirit belongs to the most high. So you have no right to take your daughter as a hostage. No. When the spirit arrives here, leave the spirit to be free. Your child has her own responsibility. She has to make her own choice. What kind of man she will marry? 
But the choices that she makes to receive a come of the consequences and that it will help her to adjust a decision next time. But you cannot continue to impose your things on people. This speed of impositions, no. Give an advice. So you have to learn how to influence and impact people without impositions. Still allow people to have their own free will. And then... Um, these kind of things can be prevented, my friends of Africa. So I want uh, to come to the end of our session today to get your inputs on today's session, what we shared today. Uh, because the topic is very sensitive, we were not going to be sharing it on the on the YouTube, but uh, I also missed to record the last part of speaking about important things. But I want to get your input on what you thought of this class on reincarnation and karma, on some of the things that we touched in today. But you come to realize that uh, spirituality is very interesting. Spirituality is very, very interesting. If you can come in, uh, uh, let's have you know, that Prino, if you're able to speak, uh, uh, you take on today's session. You know, Trino. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, brother. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, uh, it's just apart from uh, some of those uh, questions I was asking myself, you know, uh, in regard to some of those who have been here before, because initially I'd said that uh, um, the reason why memory as to our past, uh, our past lives, eh, hmm. uh, why it is erased to the extent that uh, we come here and it's like we are starting anew, mm -hmm. uh, is because uh, for us to be able to progress and for it to be a fair exam, uh, of course, that has got to, to, to be out of the way. But now there is this in, in example you gave in one of the other classes, I think it was class 38, where you talked about um, gurus. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I know that some of the gurus, um, because of the knowledge they have, uh, which they've acquired or amassed as a result of uh, um, either past experiences mm -hmm. or as a result of... Um, uh, what they know, what they've learned. Because, for example, there are people who are born mm -hmm. and they almost know they've been here before. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I've seen that even within uh, some some circles here, especially people who are traditionalists, spiritualists around here. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, they know they were here before. Mm -hmm. They even know how many times they've been here before. Mm -hmm. And then when they come around, they're the ones who at the forefront of trying to tell you uh, certain taboos, don't do this, do this, avoid this, mm -hmm. your body is not good for mm -hmm. this, that kind of thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, now in that context, how is it that for them, you know, it's like they, they can still remember, you know, they can still remember they have the other recollection of their past, and, you know, and, and are they not, uh, is, is, that not is that not unfair? <laughs> the fact that they know stuff about their lives and their past lives that we don't know you know, and then they're able to speak with authority because, you know, um, it's a cycle they've, they've they've seen before. There are things they know. You see that? Eh? Like there's one guy around here who says uh, he's incarnated about 600 times. Mm. And the guy says that mm -hmm. uh, he's been to India. He's been, and he, he, he can pinpoint the places that he has been to. Mm. And, and and he speaks with so much confidence that mm. uh, as to having been in those places, mm. and when he begins talking mm. about things that happened, let's say three hundred thousand years ago, everyone mm. is surprised and is like, "But how is that possible?" And he says, "No, I've been here before. It's you people who don't remember, but me, I remember." <laughs> <laughs> wow, amazing, amazing input, Eratino. Well, um, honestly, from from the from the hundred percent of people who I've met who says. They know their previous life and everything that happened. Ninety percent of them are liars. That's my own experience. I'll tell you about you know they tell lies because when you become a very spiritual person, first of all, you become very humble. It means if you if you find a sense of boasting in someone, I have been here many times. I know one spiritual leader in Congo. Uh, who says, this is my last incarnation. As a matter of fact, I'm not coming back here. So if you sense that feeling of someone is being boastful or proud, things like that, it's um, it's a sign many of them are lying. And for those who attain the truth, some of them, it's, you know, because he has arrived, he has arrived on the earth here, a place which is a bit lower to his place of origin. 
he begins to take everybody else as if they are below him and calls himself a guru and things like that. So spirituality comes with some sort of humility. So a person who is really, who has really reincarnated many times, who remembers, many people are silent. People who are very spiritual are very silent. If you find a person who is spiritual, who likes to talk too much, you should ask yourself questions. It's true he may have acquired some knowledge from reading books and things like that, that you do not know, and he tells you, and you feel like, okay, he remembers those things. But if you are really a servant of the Most High, and you have, you have, you have put in the work to grow spiritually, and now you're able to know certain things about yourself, it makes you very humble. You become very humble, and you become very down to earth. You don't become boasting and showing people, I have been here, I went to that particular place like that. Many of these people are manipulators who do these things. So you can sense, just you will know them by their fruits. You can sense the, the real ones and the fake ones. Many real ones who come, they, you don't even know who they are. They keep a very silent life. They help you with humility and things like that. But those that are very loud, Many of them, you find them in the Hindu cultures, Buddhists, they are gurus, they have they're taken people into these, uh, these temples, and many of them are not so um, are not so honest. They have acquired knowledge, but uh, they like to be boastful. So that is not the right way to go about spirituality. But it's not unfair for those that know, because if you have put in the work, you have received, you have, you have put in the work spiritually and you know certain you know certain things. It is actually a good thing that you know those things. It's not that it's unfair. So obviously a person who is coming from Laodicea, Philadelphia and Sardis, they are far more in spiritual knowledge compared to a person who is on the earth. They know more because they have put in the work. So if I am in the university, I know calculus and you know one plus one, it's not unfairness. I, I have worked to get to understand calculus. I've put some okay. work. So if I know how to drive and I'm driving you in the car, it's not unfair. I've learned how to drive the car. You see, maybe you are still learning. You see, but the driver who begins to boast, I know how to drive, I'm better than you. It's my lifetime driving. You see, there is a problem. There's a few minutes for me, we're at Twin, and then we'll have Rose Divine. Yes. Um, and the other thing which 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 is, uh, which bothers me a bit in, in some of these uh, awakened circles, you find uh, there are people who insist that time is an illusion, and uh, when you tell them about reincarnation and you, you talk about the age, the coming age, you talk about the reign of a thousand years, they say since time is already an illusion, then all those things you're talking about errors, uh, the time and uh, stages and periods. You know they are also what by 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 extension they are also illusions. I don't know what's your view about uh, time being an illusion because in many circles, apart from the fact I know for a fact that those who are in the spiritual kingdom are live outside time, but the rest of us who are in these other lower lower uh, uh, realms uh, we are of course subject to time. But then there's a cross section of people who insist that time is an illusion. Yeah, a very good question from you, Eratuno. I'm gonna note that down. Let's have Brother Zivai just stick it. And then uh, uh, we'll, I'll answer that question. Yes, Brother Zivai. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Avi, for the insightful uh, lesson. Um, a quick question um, that emanated from your explanation of um, what the Most High did or um, what he does. Uh, when it comes to uh, the connection uh, between the previous life and the new life, um, you mentioned something like, uh, actually you gave an analogy of um, a, an exam uh, and then uh, it would be unfair to know what's coming and stuff like that, but it would be advantageous if you don't know and then the different questions come and then if you ace them, it means you are an all-rounder, like you, you've you mastered it. Unlike uh, waiting for the same question paper to come and then you you pass. So it's not uh, more prestigious. All right, so my question regarding that is, the, uh, there's other things called uh, Akashic Records. Uh, I'm not too sure about them and um there is also the pineal gland 
which uh, I understand uh, also plays a role um, in in accessing those Akashic records, meaning um, what is on the spiritual side and then bringing them to this physical uh, or to the mental, to the mental um, body uh, so that we can use them um, in our in our physical life here on earth. Mm. So now I, I don't understand uh, if there's a contradiction between the most high designing that we are kind of prevented from accessing our previous knowledge and this, uh, I don't know what to call this new knowledge that's uh, available. Um, especially on the internet uh, regarding Akashic Records and uh, our ability to access that. Mm. So if you can help uh, harmonize the... Uh, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you so much, Brother Zubachisike. So there is a space, there is a dimension in the fourth dimension called temple space. Temple space is called uh, Mulakongo in Congo. That is where you find the Akashic Record. Akashic Record is comes from the Buddhism and spirituality in Congo, we call it the bibliography or the library of Mura Congo. So it means everything that happens in the universe, the Simbis write it down in the bibliography. It's like there's a library of everything. If you want to learn about butterflies, you enter into the library, you'll be able to learn about butterflies, all the species. So it means the universe records everything that happens. So that is why. The scientist says that energy is never lost, but only transforms. It means everything that happens in the universe, the universe records it. And the universe keeps this information in the Akasic records or in Mela Congo, right? So you have the possibility to access that information as you basically grow spiritually. But when you come on the earth, when you arrive for the first time, when you arrive on the earth, there's a veil on your face to not know of your past. But the removal of the veil on your face is a process of spiritual awakening. So you can be born with the veil on your face, but as you are growing spiritually, you begin to remove the veil. And one of the ways to remove the veil is when you begin to receive visions of the Akasic records and you're able to tap into that dimension and you're able to receive some information from there. So people who are spiritually uh, initiated who go through spiritual awakening and then all of a sudden their spiritual guys begin to visit them in their visions they can transport you in a vision into Mela Congo and you can enter into the library you can read about Brother Avi you can read about Queen Asia everyone's life is there in that dimension so it is not a contradiction when you arrive for the first time the veil is in your face but a process of spiritual awakening allows you to be able to remove the veil from your face to see your past uh, life via the help of your spiritual helpers. So it means when you begin to activate your chakras from the from the root, by the time you arrive in the crown, you can easily go by a vision or a trance into Mela Congo, which is with your spiritual helpers, and you can tap into the Akasic records, and then you can be able to read. The history of humanity. You can read about how the symbols created lions, birds. That information is available, but it takes some work that you need to do on yourself to be able to get to that possibility of removing that veil of vision and communication with the higher dimension. So the veil is put in the beginning when you arrive. By the time you enter the age of 14, you have the veil in your face. Because if at the age of 14, you have not yet mastered your chakras yet. You have not yet found stability in the root chakra. Immediately, you have your veil is opened and you're able to see those things. It can be very catastrophic. That's why it happens gradually. So it is not a contradiction. If you make an effort to work on yourself, you'll be able to tap into Mura Congo and read information about yourself of all your past incarnations. You'll be able to know. But by then, you'll be spiritually mature to take certain informations and not to take other information. Because that information, if you're not prepared, you cannot be able to take it. You know, if you have not, if you're not trained, if you do not know how to swim in a swimming pool and they throw you in an ocean, my friend, it will be a disaster. So there are some information which you cannot take unless you are spiritually ready. 
to take it. So from Jesus would tell that you tell his disciples, I have so many things to tell you, but you cannot take it. He was able to see their spiritual maturity. So a child who is learning one plus one, you can't give them algebra and calculus. So you grow into learning the different dimensions of mathematics. So by the time you're in one plus one, someone tells you that one minus two is possible. You think the person is a fool. But when you get to university, you find that even the zeros and the decimals can subtract each other. It means you are now mature and spiritually mature to be able to uh, get to that particular dimension, to understand those things that the uh, device is seeking. So a question from uh, the elder twinner was, is time an illusion? And is time in the higher dimension faster? Well, time is actually what you make it. I know we have created systems in the world where we have set 24 hours, but time is actually the things that you put together in a sequence that creates time. But it is true that in as you rise up from the material world, rising up to the higher dimension, the vibrational frequency increases, the, the heaviness of the matter decreases as you rise up. Right? So as you rise up, the, the 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 heaviness of the matter, the frequency of the matter basically increases, but the weight of the matter basically uh, decreases. So the bodies in the astral world are much lighter as compared to the bodies in the physical world. So time in the astral world would be much faster as compared to time in the physical world. So if we take it two hours to run a, run a lap, in the physical world, with your physical matter body, it can take a person who has an astral body just two minutes. So that's how basically time is. So because time is much faster, higher in the higher dimension, that's why one day to the most high is like 1,000 years on earth. The Bible says one day is like 1,000 years. So it means for us to cover one day of the spiritual kingdom on earth here, it takes us 1,000 years. You see, that's why if you... But Elder Twino, you have an experience of three days in the spiritual kingdom. When you come here on earth, you will find here things are very slow. You, will, you have certain inventions which have not yet happened here. That's why indigo keys, when they come from the higher dimensions, they are able to invent technologies which are not even here on the earth here because here time is slow. But here, but there, because the frequency is higher, time is fast. So I hope that we'll be able to explain to Elder Twino on that uh, question. Let's have Queen Wooden has a hand up. Come in, Ms. Bodo. Yes, greetings, everyone. Well, uh, welcome. I pray everybody's doing well. <clears throat> so, yeah, I was, uh, I'm, I'm in the kitchen busy. Welcome, um, so, very interesting class, very interesting class. So, I'm just curious. I don't know. I'm just curious. I'm going to assume that this Akashic record is there any symbies that is um, God in that? Meaning that you just mentioned that somebody can go there, look at Queen Asia's record, Queen Wilda's record. I mean, you, you didn't mention my name, but I'm just giving an example. Uh, look at whoever they want record. So so when it comes to that um, that level, is there anything that's called invading somebody's privacy or there's no such thing? And is there any symbi that is watching who's supposed to go there to look into their own record or not? I'm 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 just curious about that. Well, very interesting, Queen Queen Wilden. Uh, I'm sure if you go into the library, which is in the US in your area in town, you can go there, you can find some books which was written about Napoleon, written about George Washington. So someone wrote their life in that book. So you enter into a library, obviously you are free to read whoever's uh, life you want to read and which story you want to read in time in the library, right? That's how it works here on the earth. But now in the terms of spirituality, I don't. your spiritual guides are the ones that take you on that vision to Mwela Congo to answer, to find some questions to the answers that you want. And they're able to look at the intentions of your heart by your thoughts and what you emit as into. So if your intention is to go to, to the library in Wela Congo, so you can be able to spy on Queen Asia's life, so you can come back on earth and tell her, I saw you in your past life, you were a witch somewhere there in Congo. 
but obviously that will not happen. So yes, there is uh, there are, those places are guarded by 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 simbis. I'm not giving that example to taint anybody. I'll just give you an example, my friend. So you cannot go and spy on someone's life, their past life, or whether Avi, you're the one that killed people in Congo two years ago. You're ripping your camera now. No, you can you're not you're not you're not given permission to be able to access information in that way. But you can access information about yourself, about the universe, and things like that. But people who are spiritual guides of people, like for example, Queen with the spiritual guides, those that basically uh, watch over your life and speak to you, they have permission to your records in Mela Congo. In fact, they are the ones that actually tell you about yourself. It's actually your spiritual helpers who actually project to you images about your life, what's about to happen. That's how it works. But uh, the universe is just, so there are no those freebies like here on earth. You can go library and access any information there. You have to be able to first give the intentions, have to be there, what information you're looking for, and for what purpose, all those things. So those places are guarded, yes. Uh, good, good. Thank you. Zola. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I have another I have another uh <laughs> thing to say. Yes. Maybe I maybe I wasn't paying attention. Like I said, I was I'm busy in the kitchen. So I heard you said that um it's arrogant to say some, some I think somebody asks a question that they not coming back, they don't want to incarnate or they're not going to reincarnate. So I have to say, guess uh for me. I always said, and then you know, brother Avi, I always said that to you. I do not want to reincarnate. Somebody may think I'm arrogant or not. I do not want to. I I don't want to. I don't think it's arrogant to say that if I say I don't want to because I'm going to do my best. Of course, it's it's uh, probably easy to say than, than, than done with because so many crazy things is happening that will frustrate you make you angry to do things that you don't want to do. And then you're going to be forced to be come back here again. I understand all that. But my point is, I want to do my best not to come back here again. I don't know if you had mentioned it, that person mm. who said he doesn't want to come back. He was the way mm. he said it, it was arrogant or not. But for me, I don't think he's arrogant for me personally. Um, I don't want to come back here. I do not want to come back to this madness. Well, well amazing, amazing <laughs> input from you, Queen Wilder. Yeah, it depends on, on the people, right? The person who I heard was saying, I don't want to come back here, it's my last ring. His name is Dr. Wapiti. He's a Congo spiritual leader who makes those comments on his shows. But when I look at his life, how he how he treats people, how he behaves, the way he, he speaks to people, he speaks a life where he still has a lot of things to fix. So I'm asking myself when he's saying that he's not gonna come back, how? Because you look you look at a person's life who's saying, like for example, me, brother Avi, right now, the way I am, I still have things that I'm working on in my life. So I definitely want to come back to continue my experience. You see, so uh yes, it depends on how the person says it. Are they being arrogant? And also the person who's saying he doesn't want to come back, are they making the effort in their current life that is worthy of not coming back? questions uh, so let's have um queen asia come in if you have any input or question and we'll have a few of you before coming to our session today yeah queen asia almond you want to share a few things um <laughs> i i was absolutely mind blown actually at this class and um i i started putting some things together that I had been I've been in uh, meditation and prayer and just asking for I'm not going to say everything, but basically clarity and um, understanding and putting the knowledge that I have um, in science and connecting the two. And then as you were talking, I got a bunch of downloads on just the science behind everything you were saying and it came so fast that I'm sitting here with my journal and I have about four or five pages mm. of just notes mm. and just different things. So it would take up way too much time to actually mm. even get into everything. But I'm sitting here in absolute awe um, of this class and I am just grateful and 
I'm just, I, I guess the, what I want to express is I, I want people to know that they have access to all of the information in the universe. Mm -hmm. You have all of the knowledge within you. You just have to tap in mm -hmm. to get it. Mm -hmm. No one is more advanced than you. No one has more knowledge than you. We mm -hmm. all have access to the same information mm -hmm. or the same acoustic records or whatever um, word or phrase you use to explain it. We all have access to it. And mm -hmm. if you sincerely want it, then you ask your ancestors to guide you um, to the information and you do your part. You mm -hmm. seek it out. You meditate. You you talk to them and not only talk, but listen, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of us talk during prayer. We don't listen enough. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's all I wanted to say. But I um, I truly enjoyed this class. Yeah, thank you so much for that in Asia. Brother Victor Salo has joined us after such a long time. But uh, I know reincarnation, reincarnation is one of his favorite topics as well. Uh, Mr. Salo, hope you're doing all right. If you have any uh, comment to make, you can come in, uh, Victor Salo all the way in Nigeria. Uh, welcome. Yeah, yeah, good. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I really don't have much to say, but um, I really enjoyed the class. Thank you so much. Um, wow. Amazing. Some things make sense. Some things um, still need to, I still need to like, you know, you know, um, Okay. Maybe listen again and yes. think on it again. Wow. But some things will actually really make sense. Thank you so, so thank much. you so much. Thank you so much, Brother Victor, for that input. Yes. Any input from you, Queen Anne, all the way in Canada? You want to share? Uh, yes. Good morning, everyone. Hi, welcome. So I wanted to get some clarification about the trapped soul that people doesn't know that they are trapped. Mm. As in stuck in the wrong body? Yes, like you explained about the trapped soul. This is new. That's the first time I hear that that you behave, you are a girl, but inside you are a man and you don't know that you are a man and you clashes with your partner, husband, wife. So how do we know that we are we have a trapped soul or we are trapped or something like that? Well, wow, very, very good question, Queen Anne. You know, we have lost uh, many knowledge in spirituality. We do not have temples anymore. Uh, I think maybe the, the Hindu culture, they still have temples where people can go and, and deal with things spiritually. But in the, in the side of Africa, we just have churches and they are not really temples. So, and even the doctors of today that we have in the hospital, they only know the anatomy of the physical body. They cannot tell the anatomy of the astral body. They do not know the anatomy of the mental body. So when you go to them that you are not feeling well or something wrong in your family or a couple, they can just send you to a psychiatrist or a psychologist or marriage counseling. But even the marriage counselor does not know the anatomy of these bodies. So they think that you have maybe a mental problem. Maybe there's something. Brother Avi. Yes. I'll... Yes, Yellow Trino. I was asking, uh, as actually Queen Akatabel was asking, she wanted to know for some of those people who discover that they, they have a deformity. Let's say she's female inside, but then outside uh, he has a male, male, what? Male uh, physical body. Uh, like, you know, in Christianity, they tell us about repenting, that when you repent, especially after knowing certain weaknesses, you'll be forgiven. What do they do in this life uh, to, 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 you know, repent of that or to change? And, and make amends. Mm. Mm. Very good question as well for, for the trainer. So uh, let's address the question that we asked. How do you know? So deformed soul, then it will answer the Queen Katarina Kabira's question as well. So well, uh, one first sign that uh, a trapped soul is you will notice that the person actually 
if the person feels like a woman on the inside but has a physical body of a man, the person actually changes uh, their appearance. You have seen into transgender. It means they begin to if if it's a if it's a man physically, but feels like a woman on the inside, the person actually begins to dress like a woman, putting lipsticks, and then walking like a woman, things like that. That's the first thing. They change how they look on the outside to suit how they look on the inside. Others even go far to changing their organs to, to resemble basically how they look on the outside. So if it's a if it's a if it's a transgender male, like you can see over there, she, he now dresses like a woman, walks like a woman, talks like a woman. They can even change their organs. He can she can put in uh re replace the penis and the vagina cut off, uh, putting breast, fake breast on the chest and things like that to now look like how she feels on the inside, right? It's the same thing with a man. So these are the common indications when you can know if someone is a trap. So it's first of all, they change their appearance on the outside. Another thing is they even change their organs. Another indication is, is they do not, they cannot procreate, they cannot have children. So it's a woman who bears children. So it means if a woman is not able to have children, it can be an indication that she could be a deformed soul, but that's also not the reason. Another reason could be maybe she just has bad diet, uh, maybe depression, stress is preventing her from having a child. It could also be maybe she has a particular specific karma where she cannot have children, her organs are blocked and things like that but that happens mostly if she's a trapped so it means you've been in a relationship with a woman but she cannot bear children it could either mean that she specifically she could be a normal woman she's a woman on the inside woman on the outside but she has just a karma of not bearing children or she could be a deformed so on the inside she is like uh, the man and things like that but there are also other cases where um, the person does not show any of the indications of being gay and being lesbian or transgender or bisexual cure, but they seem to be normal to you on the outside. They dress like a woman or they dress like a man. They behave like a woman, but on the inside, they're actually a, a trapped soul and they do not know it by ignorance. Now, that is very difficult to, to track because we do not have spiritual schools anymore and spiritual doctors like back in the days where they can be able to identify. So I was giving that explanation that if you go to a medical doctor and you say to your doctor that my wife cannot conceive, we have tried everything, she cannot have a child. Now, if that doctor is a spiritual doctor, not only a physical doctor for the physical body, he also understands the other anatomies of other bodies. We shall have these doctors in the new Africa, doctors who understand spiritual uh, anatomy of a man and also understand the spiritual anatomy of a woman. So that doctor can look, first of all, at your out, can look at your physical, do some tests on your physical body. If everything is fine and the organs are fine, the uterus is fine, everything about you as a woman is fine. And then they can now look into the spiritual side. Then they can discover other things to say, okay, look, from the way we are seeing your the, the anatomy of your astral body, you have an astral body of a man, but your physical body is of a woman. I don't understand how come, but I'm a woman. So it could also happen out of ignorance. There are certain explanations for it, which we cannot say in an open platform like this, but these things do happen, Queen. They do happen. And it can it can be repaired spiritually, but you have to wait out the incarnation, you know, and for the next incarnation, then you can be able to, to fix it. It cannot be repaired because it's very difficult to swap the astral body while you're existing like that. So here's some of the indications, Queen Anne, for how this can be able to, uh, how you can identify uh, these are uh, deformed souls, but others is very difficult to identify unless you really meet a spiritual person who understands the anatomy that can be able to look at your 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 life on your different bodies on the inside. So 
um, in this kind of cases, you may find couples who are perfect, who are perfectly normal outside, but they are facing marital problems because there's that force of repulsion among them because one of them is a deformed soul. So in this situation, you find that things will not be working out in the relationship. So things will not happen, will not be happening well in the relationship. I'm not saying that every relationship that faces problems, it means the person is a deformed soul. Please, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying in other cases, this is the case that happens. Something always happens to keep you apart. And that is the reason behind that. If you tap into spirituality, you'll be able to understand. So if you come to discover, for example, your husband is a deformed soul, then you can find a way. Because the person is still a man on the outside, you can not divorce the person, but you can accept that maybe you will not have children. And then you maybe adopt a child and then fix those karmas. And in this incarnation, you can have children, uh, maybe normally, and things like that. So from the question that Elatrino Trino asked, um, I think Elatrino, you asked basically how it can be repaired, right? That was your question. Right, Elatrino? Yeah, Elatrino, you there? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, because the thing is that uh, in this lifetime, it's like we have very little opportunity uh, for for us to repair or amen, make amends for certain things, uh, uh, certain aspects in this life based on what you've been teaching. And we have to sit out and wait for the next incarnation, mm -hmm. especially now things are uh, like, like what you described in regard to those uh, deformities where you have a uh, a, a, a female stroke body in a in a male physical body, but I was just uh, because when when she was asking this question, she was just asking, she was just she was just trying to understand: is there any way someone can repent about this, and then you know it is resolved, you know things like that? Eh? Yeah. No, the problem, the problem. That's the problem in Christianity. Repentance means uh, pronouncing pronouncing of certain words, and then. Things are forgiven. No, in, in spirituality, to repent means to change, and and change like this, especially in deformed bodies, you just need to live in love, purity, and justice in that life. If, for example, you are gay, you discover that you are a woman, you are trapped in a man's body, you are gay. What is the best way to repair? The best way to repair is not to uh, basically go and start sleeping with another man. Like, uh, like like animals, so dominant from behind. There you are actually reinforcing the karma. So what you do, you will stay unmarried. You will not marry in that incarnation because you know you are trapped in the wrong body. And you will not begin to dress like a woman. You will not begin to change your body organs into a woman. You will stay like that as a man in that incarnation, spend your time to be a blessing to humanity, you know, and don't have relationships with uh, uh, with other men, you see, but you can meet a woman and you respect the same uh, the, the same duality way you, you, even though you have a body of a man, you're a woman on the inside, you find another woman to respect the you know how it looks on the appearance on the outside, but even though it will be very difficult also because even if you choose to, you have a body of a man, but a woman on the inside. You find the actual normal woman to be with, it won't work. As I was just trying to explain, because there will always be something pulling you apart. So the best thing to do in Nakatabira is to sit out this incarnation, live in love, beauty, and justice, understand spirituality, and then repair by, by not engaging in that act in this incarnation. That's how you repent. So re repentance is in the action. Remember, repentance is... You, you recognize that you were wrong and then you repent yes you were wrong but then you repair it means you don't you do opposite to what you did that's how you repair so in the case of a woman as well you know okay i'm a woman but i feel attracted to women it means on the inside you're a man so if you you have those feelings you sit out the incarnation you don't marry you don't engage in any sexual activities because even if you joined another man, 
but you are a deformed form. You won't give that man a baby. Something will always pull you guys apart. You see? So you have to sit out because it cannot, those bodies cannot be switched back. No. So there are some crimes, you know, when you break when you break a glass, you know, even you try to assemble it together with glue, it doesn't look like how it was. So we have ended up in these situations because of sin. So we have to assume the responsibility. So the best thing is just to sit out that the incarnation. Yes, Queen Asia, how many if you can come in? Um, I wanted to mention something um, about when you were, I think w when you were talking about a woman um, when she is getting pregnant and she, um, I'm sorry, when she's uh, pregnant, she sends energies um, she's letting off energy and that's um, the law of affinity. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it made me think of hormones. Um, and it, it instantly took me back to um, when I was giving birth um, this past time to Judah um, specifically. And it made me think, about birth growing you meet reach maturity and then um you know decomposition starts mm -hmm. but at, during pregnancy a woman's hormone hormone levels have to be um a certain level to sustain pregnancy mm -hmm. so when you go to the doctor for the first time they check your hormone level to see if they're a certain level to sustain pregnancy. If it's too low, most mm -hmm. of the time they'll tell you this is in a viable pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and right around, I think they say 12 weeks um, is when your uh, hormone level is at its highest um, in a pregnancy. So it makes sense to me that you say right around three or four months is when the spirit um, incarnates because mm -hmm. that's when a woman's hormone level is at its highest. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about um, teenagers and how right around when a girl hits puberty, mm -hmm. her hormone level, again, is at its highest and mm -hmm. she's now able to bear children or mm -hmm. she's able to call spirits to her because her hormone level is at a certain um, you know, level. Um, so it it just brought all of that to um, my mind. And I was going to say, um, as above, so below. So a lot of things connected with me today when you were talking about mm -hmm. the woman's body, because me as a woman who has bared children mm -hmm. several times, it's putting a lot in perspective. So uh, I, I wanted to just give that a little bit of input. Wow, amazing input from you, Queen Asia. You see, my friends of Africa, the Queen has confirmed some of these things that we were teaching. Even with science, I think this, this class on reincarnation has to be taught by you, Queens, because you go through these things. You know exactly some of the things that happened the first time you felt the movement when a child is moving and things like that. You are witnesses to this, this, this kind of things. An absolute witness to this kind of things. So, yes, my elder twin, no? Uh, spirituality is serious business. So we are suffering today in the world because we have moved away from taking things seriously according to the ways of the Most High. So poverty of today is linked to spiritual loss. Hunger, famine, mitral problems is linked to spiritual problems because we have lost our way. It's a question from Barazivan in the chat. Since a spirit incarnates the fetus, while still in the womb. So do the laws of attraction apply when adopting an unwanted baby or the baby's cameras will be set already? But if you can come in to explain your question, so we can be able to understand uh, what, 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 what the question is exactly. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the question. Yes. Thank you very much, Brother Avi. Um, I'm talking about um, uh, a, a family, say, that decides to adopt a child or a baby. So my question is, um, 
under normal circumstances when two parents are going to uh, form or create or uh, uh, procreate, should I say, the laws of attraction, as you explained um, before, are applied uh, in attracting the spirit that will incarnate the baby, uh, sorry, the fetus. Mm -hmm. But then um, now we're having a baby who will be raised by another set of parents. So uh, as you explained that uh, the baby whom you attract Let's say it's these parents who are forming the body uh, that will be reincarnated. So they are attracting a spirit that will be repaying karma, a certain karma. But now my question is, we are having this baby who will be given up to another family. So this baby, uh, will it be born already with the karma set for them? which has nothing to do with the family under which they will be raised, or the laws of attraction will be for the original parents of the baby, not the adoptive parents. I'm trying to understand there you uh, because you, you may have, for example, our pastors who cannot have kids, they adopt a child. And that child, uh, regardless of the environment, they have raised that child. That child is somewhat different. And uh, I would say, uh, I'll ascribe uh, karma to that, is paying certain karma. So that child is um, living like uh, in the lower uh, uh, vibration uh, or vibrating in the lower frequencies. So now uh, that child uh, being in that family, does it have any correlation? Are there any laws that apply in that case or the laws only apply to the original parents of the child, even if the child will be raised by a, a, a different uh, set of parents? I don't know if it's clear or not. Mm. Very clear, very clear, my elder. So when the child is coming into the world, thank you so much, Queen Sheila. I appreciate you for really joining us. So when a child is coming into the world, the child follows, is, is attracted by the parents who who actually have created the body for the child. So it, uh, their karmas, by attraction of affinity, is attracted by the birth parents. So it means as he, the spiritual experience of this spirit is sort of in in uh, in in similarity to the spiritual experience of the prime. That's how it works. So all these three laws come into play: attraction of affinity, justice, and shock return. This spirit, the universe mixes it in a bucket, and they know exactly which point they can they can send to. So the child is attracted by the spiritual karma or attraction of affinity of that particular birth parents, but. In the case where the pastor and his wife cannot have a child and you adopt this child into your family, the karmas are still the karmas of the parents of origin that gave birth to the child. They are the ones who have the similar karma to the child. So that's why uh, when you're going to adopt a baby, you have to know the history of the birth parents. It's very, very important because I used to feel like I want to adopt children. I want to adopt children everywhere. But when I came to understand spirituality, I can realize that ah, it's better I have my own kids because adopting kids is also a very big responsibility because you're adopting kids who are carrying certain karmas that you yourself did not pull them. But let's say, for example, you go to adopt a child and you're told that this child's parents were armed robbers. Now, but the question is, was the parents in the environment of armed robbing activities when the child was pregnant is the question. When the woman was pregnant if yes it means this child has some commons of uh, related to the arm robbing thing 
So by the age of 14, 15, this child may feel like stealing and things like that. Now, maybe you don't, you don't want to take the responsibility of a child who's coming in into your family and they have habits of stealing and arm robbing and killing. You see that it becomes problems for you. So it's better sometimes to just open an orphanage where you keep children there than to have them in your own family unless you're willing to assume the responsibility. So yes, I was very sick. The child follows the karma of the pet parents, but since you accept them as your your child, you've adopted them. Um, they're not they're not they not they do not really take your karma, but they bring the karma of their 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 pet parents, and now you have to assume the responsibility and see then how you're going to raise this child. Uh, but you have to be able to study the pet parents' life and the environment where the child is coming from. Yes, Queen Asia, before we come to the end of our session today. Mm. Um, I'm not quite sure who asked that question, um, but I, I did want to say that because we are all here to learn and repair karmas, part of our job is to help others to do the same thing. So um, a beautiful thing about adopting or, you know, raising someone else's kids is that you could help them repair the karmas that they're here to repair mm -hmm. um, and, and do that in love because that's the greatest act of love that we can give is to sacrifice for someone mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. um, so a beautiful thing about adopting is that you can do that. Now where it falls short is when you still have a bunch of karmas to repair. And so it's like the blind leading the blind. Mm -hmm. But if you're further along in your journey you can also help that child through their karmas. So I Absolutely. just wanted to say that. Absolutely. So spiritual women like Queen Asia, Queen Wilded, Queen Anne, you can be good parents to adopt a child because you understand spirituality. You know, but a woman who does not understand spirituality, when she adopts a child, it's not easy. Because you know when you adopt a child that by the time, especially if you adopt a child who's six months, you have to get ready by the time the child gets to 14. Now you know which spirit exactly has come. Because the spirit will begin to manifest their behavior at the age of 14. So you have to you, you begin to prepare yourself for this child. You see, when you adopt. And if you adopt a child whereby you do not know the life of the parents that gave this child the body, now that becomes a problem also. But at least if you know that the okay, the parents died in a car crash, this is how the father was, the father grew up somewhere there. In California, he went to school, was very intelligent, his life was focused, he was focused on the things of God, he met the mother somewhere, they got married, and unfortunately died in the car crash. You see such a child, you can give you an intention, okay, maybe this is a spirit that, you know, that, that won't cause me so much problem. But if you hear, for example, you adopt a child, for example, uh, you adopt a child of Jay-Z and Beyonce, <laughs> well, get ready. I don't know, you have the spiritual maturity to, to deal with that child, because those couple probably have put in an entity in the lower astral world. Now, are you going to deal with an entity in the lower astral world who at night, they come to pick her up and take her to the lower astral world? She wakes up. Things begin to go difficult in your house because you have a, a seed of the devil. So adoption, be very wise. Queen Wilder, if you can come in before I come to the end of our session. Um, Ms. Bodo. Adoption. Are you going to take one? Miss Poto, are you there? I think Miss Poto is far from her mic. Yeah, let's have um by the fire. By the fire, you're planning to adopt. By the way, just seeking. Maybe in the um no, I, I never thought of it that way because I think I already have enough kids, but um uh helping out definitely I will. Um, it has always been my, my, my desire to to reach out to other kids, perhaps who don't have uh, the support that Absolutely. Um, I provide. Yes, that one has always been a long standing one. Awesome, awesome. I think that's a, that's that's good for us. Why just seeking? Oh, what you yeah. can do that. Okay, oh. go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go oh. ahead. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was going to be on the the reference you made of uh, a mother um, uh, mistreating uh, their daughter, and then 
mm-hmm. it happens that they 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 come back mm-hmm. um as the spirit uh, to be born by the same daughter mm-hmm. so I, I wanted to ask so it, it can be as short as one generation uh oh, for yes. uh reincarnation to take place so it's always more than five generations yeah i mean i mean that's very interesting i used to think that uh incarnations take a long time but it would depend on the force of attraction of affinity you see for example that daughter and her mother the force of attraction of affinity was very strong so immediately immediately the mother died it didn't take much time immediately she rose and pulled her back immediately but in other cases it can take some time because it it means that uh, that mother did, didn't have to go through the process of astral prisons. Her reparation was mostly here on the earth. That's why she came directly. But in the case where you have other karmas, you have to go to the astral prisons first and then recognize them, go to the chamber of repentance and then reincarnate back. So it may take maybe 50 years or 100 years to reincarnate back. But for this woman, the attraction of affinity was very strong and her reparation was strictly here on the earth so she had to come immediately back to her daughter because that's where she needed to face her comments was through her daughter's life you see so it depends okay okay right. where's her Thank daughter you. coming yes yeah, so um <clears throat> i think for me adoption after i have learned so much from from your class I have learned a lot. I, un- I understand better now. I would think twice and definitely praying even more to do an ed- investigation on the parents. Like you said, I agree 100%. Personally, I would not want to uh, adopt a child who is older than a year. I want them to be baby, baby, so they know me. I can teach them from start, from scratch. Mm-hmm. But to adapt a child, unfortunately, to say uh, like um, two, three, four, five and up, I don't think I would want that. Uh, you understand because they are at that age, you already know mommy and daddy al- already. So I want them to know me from start. And then I want to impart the spiritual life into them from, from the beginning. But uh, it's not something that I'm looking forward at all. Definitely not my husband, you know, because of um, I have a friend who been through hell by adopting a child who was like four, four years old. That child almost killed everybody in the house, and and the story goes on. So it's it's very challenging to adopt a child. Have to be extremely careful, and and really, and a uh, spiritual person like you were saying, you have to be a heavy prayer because it can end your life. You can go to your early early grave. Do you understand? So, um, yeah, that's how I'll say about that. And one thing I have to say, um, you just said something um, to the brother that the lady has to come back to repair her karma because she is in a uh, spiritual prison. So um, how early is that when somebody has to come back to repair the karma? Because I remember I asked a question Um how long does it take for somebody to come back once they die? Let's say, for example, my mother died 14 years ago. So how long will it take so uh, for her to come back to repay her karma and things like that? Does anybody really know that that question? I mean, the answer to that question? Yeah, I think we, we, we just responded to it with brother. It's a very question. It would, depend, it would depend on what karma exactly your mother has to repair. Like in the case of that mother who was so strict on her daughter she came right okay, immediately okay. she came immediately after that just after a few months when the child i mean i mean obviously the girl got married in a year or two so he came she came okay. right back in but in other yeah, places okay. in other cases it could take some time if you have to go to the astral prisons to 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 face your egregores and then go to the chamber of repentance to be taught it could take 50 100 years to come back but uh it can take some time depending on 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 the, the camera that you have to repair. Wow, amazing. Let's have uh, well, Jackson Naibu come in before end our session today. And let's also have Queen Anne and they will end for today. I think the meeting is ending very soon. But Jackson Naibu, you have anything you want to share before we close? Uh, Jackson Naibu. In Yetama Elder, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much and for everybody who came. 
even it was kind of struggle trying to get in for the Zoom, but I couldn't invite somebody to come in. I apologize about that. But it was it was uh, revealed to me as always, but it was interesting at the same time. I kind of trying to listen over again, even though it won't be on YouTube. But thank you so much, Ngeta. Thank you so much, uh, Elder, Elder Jackson. Yes, I hope Queen Anne will be able to answer your question. I know it's very difficult sometimes, but um, the best way is just to advise, you know, especially the person, just to to not add to the comments. You know, other cases can also be energetic. You know, people could pick up energies from here and there, and it begins to make them act differently. But the best thing is just to change uh, their energies to be able to repair. You can repair in the same incarnation if it's just a bunch of energies, if you're not really a deformed soul. So that's basically what I can say uh, for that. But if uh, the person is a deformed soul from the, the science that we have mentioned, uh, then it's just better to sit out this incarnation. So we have to show such people so much love. I know people have so much hate for these LGBTs and gays, but show them love but also show them that uh, engaging in the act that they're doing is not the right way to solve their karma. Yes, Queen Anne, you want to say something before we end? Queen Anne. So I wanted to add to the reparation of the soul, right? The karmas and everything. So for instance, when we reincarnate, I know we don't know what were our past life. But still, how do we know we are on the right track and that we are repairing our karma while we are here? How do we know? How do we know if we're on the right track and if we're repairing our karma? So karma are basically what we call... Um, now, first of all, they are good karmas and they are bad karmas. So good karmas are certain experiences that come back to you you know, David says that I've never seen a man who's righteous uh, die of poverty. So there are some people who are reaping their karmas. It means they planted some good things in their past life. And in this life, they are healthy. They have no financial problems. They live in a good place. Their children are okay. So the things that they planted, they are reaping it back in their lives. And you you, you see such people, you say, oh, they have such a beautiful life. They have no problems, but maybe... They are basically reaping their karma in a good way. But there are some people who are reaping their karma in the bad way. So in the same way, there are certain challenges that you face personally queen, in your life, which you have to be able to overcome. It could be certain problems. It could be things that you, in your life, are sort of blockages that prevent you from becoming who you are. These are what we call karmas. Because you planted them. Let's say, for example, you were very rude to people in your past incarnation. But now in this, in this your life, everyone is rude to you. You don't understand why people are always rude to you. These are blockages that you planted. They have come back on you. So if you understand that, you'll be like, okay, maybe I should be more loving to people to remove this blockage of karma, of rudeness. Let's say, for example, you like to spend money. You always, you never, you know, you don't have the, the mentality of... Um, saving it's like a, it has become a problem whereby if you have money you spend all of it it is a problem so you need to overcome that so there are different dimensions of commas so this is so certain blockages in your life it could be a karma that you need to overcome let's say for example you have an issue of forgiving every time someone hurts you you are unforgiving you never forgive you always take everything with hate it could be something that you have to work on. So challenges that we face in life in Anne, are basically commas that we have to fix. And if we begin to overcome those challenges, then we are fixing those commas. Does that make sense, Queen Anne? Yes. Yes. Like, for example, in my case, when I, I had a lot of problems of sexual immorality when I was from the age of teenage. So that was a very big blockage for me that I, be, I, need, I needed to overcome. And even impatient, I've been very, very impatient in my life. The things that I'm trying to work on. So as I begin to succeed in each of these lessons, then it means I'm basically repairing my, my karma. So that's what we have for you today, my friends of Africa. The minutes are ending. But we shall combine all these recordings into one. 
You shall have it available on the YouTube and also on the Patreon. Love and blessings to you all. Have a productive week. We shall continue with our session next week. We shall speak about the law uh, of reciprocal of effect in debt. No, the law of karma in details to be understand how exactly it works. This I mean, this whole thing of karma. Love and blessings to you all. May the most I be with you. And, and I hope that next week we cannot face the same problem again. We'll try to resolve it this week. And next week we shall be able to have a great class. Love and blessings to you, Queen Asia. Thank you for being there. I uh, wanted us to to have a meeting with Queen Asia for a short time. I'm a bit uh, tired from speaking along for a long time, but I'll definitely text to you, Queen Asia, and then we'll make a plan. Thank you so much, Queen Mildred, and also by the voice of and the trainer for your questions. If you have any more questions on karma and what we covered today, please send it in the class. I'll be able to find time to respond to it as soon as possible. And I'll be sharing the slide as well for today's class also in the, in the class. Thank you, everybody. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Blessings be unto you. Zola, everybody. Till next week. Zola. Zola.